Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the FBC Bolingbrook Bible's Recap for the week of April 26th to May 2nd, 2020. So this week, our primary books that we covered was the Book of Psalms. We were in the Book of Chronicles, and then there was one chapter of the Book of 2 Samuel. So last week, we spent some time talking about the Book of Psalms and why they were written and what to expect. And I, and I hope all of you were able to really dig in to write your own psalm. So this week, I want to spend some time looking at uh, the intro to Chronicles, to that first Chronicles book that we have been reading, specifically to talk about the genealogies. So out of the gate, let me read the genealogies. So us, we will know that they are important because they're in the Bible and God doesn't waste words. So they are there for a purpose. So let's talk about what that purpose is. So for the people of Israel, the genealogies were extremely important. You know, because the idea of heritage and the family lines were great, and also, it was to, to prove that they actually can do the task that, that God sent out for them. For example, you know, the Levites and the priestly crew, you know, they were the, the folks that were to be able to minister to the folks as priests. So they had to be able to trace their line, their lineage, their line back for their family for people to say, yes, you know, you can do this job and for them to be able to do it without God striking them down. Also, when the folks were in exile, the genealogies were very important for them as well because it also gave them this sense of identity. You know, they're going back really far. You can trace your line back through as a people to Abraham and the people to kind of really show what God um, did. So that was in, in time of the exile, those are the things that they look at to help shore them up as well. So what does that mean for us? So for us, you know, the genealogies are important too, as they show us God's promises revealed. So when God tells us that, you know, he is going to make Abraham's descendants, you know, countless. You know, even just the fraction of the, the folks that we read about um, in these genealogies across the Bible, you know, really show the magnitude of the descendants that are coming in um, from Abraham, which God promised that would happen. Also, God promised that he would raise up a new king from the line of David, we can actually see that when we trace and read through the text of the genealogies, we can see that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, you know, came out of the line of David from Judah. So all of this will tell us now that we can really trust in God's promises, that he will do what he says he can do. So we should comply and do the things that we know we should do, trusting on his promises. Also, you know, stepping away a little bit from the from the genealogies and, you know, some of the stories that we saw in Chronicles was David, the big one was David actually taking the throne, the kingdom of, of the total kingdom now. So he became the king over um, all of the his, his clan, um, Judah, and all of Israel. Um, as well. So before he spent um, about seven years being the king of, of Judah, and now he's, he's being king. When the folks in Israel approach him, says, hey, you know what? God said you're going to do this, and you're going to be a great king for us. We want you to be our king. And, and that has happened. He did have to clear Jerusalem of some folks who were in there, um, and he did that. And we saw how that was done in the book as well, which is one of those great things. Also, one of the things that was really interesting in the reading is we saw the, the, a retelling of the end of Saul. So this was Saul when he died and he committed suicide. And that last set of verses there talked about how Saul was not very obedient um, to God and God ripped the kingdom away from him and gave it to David. 
also, in this part, we also see David, you know, when he has to go up um, against enemies um, like the Philistines in these chapters, he's asking God and consulting with God and talking to God and says, hey, should I go up? What should we do? This is one of the very powerful things we see about David in this time that he's still talking, he's still consulting God um, about the things that he really would need to do. Also, so it is if, if David can do it, you know, we should be doing that as well. You know, talking to God, consulting God on the things that we should do. And we don't have to be searching for an audible from God. No, he gave us his word. He told us exactly in his Bible what we should do. So the way we consult God today is we read the text. We read the text and he will take it from there in making things clear for us. All right. So next week coming up, we have a bunch of very interesting stories. You know, so I'm going to focus on that awesome story about the ark, um, bringing the ark back and what, what happened there. So until we meet again, God bless.